Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, boys and girls. Where y'all up to? Mr. Organization over here today. <laughs> Not really, but I'm here. I am here. Gonna show you the next step in this saddle I'm making. Spreading some blue, baby. I guess I could have, should have showed you what we did before this step. Uh, basically, I laid seat strainer down on a piece of, I like to use oil tan chap leather. Because the oil tan in it will make it last a lot longer. This is the part, or a part, of a saddle that not many will ever see, but it's still a part that needs to be done. A lot of the guys will buy a tree and they do it with a fiberglass tree, not a rawhide tree. And they'll have this piece made out of fiberglass already in it. Um, But I, I'm gonna do this. Of course, I might have to start doing that because these things are freaking hard to find because everybody's doing it the newfangled way. Better put me some glue back here too. And I need to find it's a sheet metal workers. Tool. It's a roller. So I can, I'll show you what I mean here in a minute after I get this stuff spread. Because when we're done here, we're going to go to the saddle and kind of get it ready for, for what this, where this is going to go on with that. I actually finally found, I bought about six of them. Every time I'd buy one, it wasn't the right freaking one. It was looking totally different than what they showed me on the cotton picking internets. I like this glue, this brand of glue. It doesn't have near the fumes as barges does and so far it's stuck to everything I've put it on now while I'm gonna let that sit up and dry or get tacky and everything like that and then I'm gonna grab something out of the refrigerator I like to do my casing in the refrigerator simply because, you know, I drive that truck every once in a while. I don't ever know when I'm going to get a phone call. There's the first piece that's going on. Uh, I've got some skiving to do to it, but... I know that if I get a phone call and I gotta leave the house real quick, this will not grow mold on it while it's in the refrigerator. I've had it sit for two weeks. Hell, three weeks at times. And I come back and it's just as ready to go as it was the day I left. Mr. Organization over here. This ought to be tacky enough, but while I'm waiting for it to get even a little bit more better tackier, I'm gonna open up this.
But hey, that's what I wanted. You know how hard it is to find ring shank nails that size in a stainless steel? I got these from Hagel's Cowboy Gear up in Wyoming somewhere. Couldn't find them locally. So, I, I want the stainless simply because, and I didn't get an invoice from her. What the hell? I, don't know, I paid her, but you usually get a receipt. All right, so anyway, back to this. I'm going to get this glued down and then take them nails I just showed you. And uh, nail it to my tree. Yeah, I know. How exciting can that be, huh? <laughs> Oh, and I forgot to show you what I did earlier to prep this. Uh, I cut it about an inch bigger than it needed to be, or than it is, and then I took it to my bell skiver and went ahead and skived it down right there so it will have a nice transition into the tree. So now, let's hope I can find Hang on, I'll be right back, kids. I know, I know, Mr. Organization. That's my new nickname. Mr. Organization. Where's my hammer? There it is up there. All right, good deal. So now, we got to move the camera. So hopefully you can see what we're trying to do here. I got a little old tripod from Walmart is all I got. I don't have an assistant that comes and helps me. So that's about as best we're going to be able to do right now, kids, until I hit the lottery. And uh, I'm going to do some trimming real quick. Mash this down. Hey, I'm trying to get it on the camera. This part right here comes up on top of your ground seat. So I'm gonna go like this right here. Don't need that. trying to do this so I don't cut myself. That's a pretty sharp knife right there. Alright, now I can bend this down here out of the way. That. That's in the center. I've got a center line mark over here. I eyeball. And I'll start it right there. And of course, I didn't bring tags. <laughs> I didn't bring enough tags in. Now these are stainless. Let's see if they're stainless. Yep, no magnetic to them. All right, I'm 
digging that, I'm digging that. Now, can y'all see that end? Now I can concentrate on this end here, getting centered up. Um, gotta make sure I get that up underneath there. So I don't put a nail through it and not be able to get back to it. Put that up under here. that but to make this easier I'm gonna get a marker that hopefully marks okay. and how about a ruler a see-through ruler here by I got it so I go from right there to right there is six and oh, I hate this ruler. I don't even remember where I got it from, but it starts out with sixteenths of an inch, goes up to six inches, then poof, it goes to one tenth of an inch. Who the hell uses a tenth of an inch anymore? Piece of junk. Piece of junk. Anyway, that's for those that do uh, drafting, I guess. So there is one, two, three, four, five. So that would be two and a half. There's my one and a half right there. That'll be my center of this ground seat. Now, this is just not quite long enough. Now, I gotta eyeball this over here. Do like that right there. And there's a, I reached out to a guy I hadn't heard back from him, but there's a way, and I don't have the freaking taller uh, taller square like that that I need. I hate it when that happens. And I gotta come back and double check everything. Coulda, shoulda, went ahead and poked a hole through that leather. But it's too effing late now. Mas clavos. Y'all probably saying, what did he say? Mas clavos, which is more nails. Some of y'all don't know, a hundred years ago, when I was a young man, I worked for Eli Rios, bootmaker way down in South Texas. And my job was the warehouse guy. 
So when they came to me and told me, Mas Clavos, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. <laughs> so I learned. I used to speak real good Spanish back in the days. Used to swing a good hammer too way back in the day. Now I just work my way forward after I quadruple check. Make sure I'm still centered up like I need to be, which do that. Dig. We're digging it, we're digging it. You having fun yet, kids? <laughs> I know, I'm not very exciting, I'm sorry. But you'll be alright. This is all done. It, it, damn near be an inch of leather up there. Oops. Not so much back here. Not so much back there's. Now the fun part.
Next thing we gotta do is when you line this part here up, you want it hitting right about the bottom of that gullet. And that's what I'm trying to find the spot, sweet spot for it now, which I'm gonna have to mark this again because it faded down me or got rubbed off by me. So I'm gonna do it like this. Five. I need a good scratch off, but I don't have one, dang it. Now I gotta go like that right there, like that. Still in the center. Now I just need to make sure that. poke me some holes through that leather because I don't want to argue with it. And to do that, I'm going to cheat and use this group. See why I use this leather is pretty tough. I'm going to end up doing this later anyway. I'm going to go ahead and get one stored just to cheat a little bit. I'm going to have to take some snips and cut these a little short, which means I'm going to have to cut y'all loose because them snips are way outside in my tool shed out there. So let me tell you, toodaloo, buggeroos, and I'll come back to this in a minute. I'll come show you what we do later on, but I'm going to have to cut these just a hair. Cut these right there a hair to fit better into that, that little seam right there. <laughs> yes, Wes. I made that leather smock, Wes Harkins. Uh, all right, toodaloo, buggeroos. Y'all go have a good day.